get started. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone tonight to our school board meeting. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order at this time. And if everyone would please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. At this time, we'll stand and say our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. district move forward. January is National School Board Recognition Month and I'd like to thank you in this public setting for your service. I hope that you've noticed you've got several um, items of um, thank yous there at your uh, seats and we've got some more special things for you all tonight but we truly appreciate the work that you do for our school district. Um, I have a little thing and I have a gift for you and um, Susan's going to be very surprised by it. <laughs> but I've got a little excerpt that I'd like to read from a book and it's called The Coffee Bean. And I rewrote a few, a few lines of it to kind of um, relate to the position that you all hold. It says that life is like a is often like a pot of very hot water. It can be a harsh, stressful, and difficult place. You will find yourself in environments and facing conditions that test you who you truly are. And you can change, it can weaken, or it can harden you if you let it. Like all the stuff I'm going through right now, the writer says, you're feeling the pressure of work responsibilities, family and community obligations, and effective school board decisions. You may, from time to time, feel the heat that comes with expectations of being a great school board member. But you have a choice. You can be like a carrot that is weakened and softened when it's put in boiling water. You can be like an egg that's hardened by boiling water. Or you can be like a coffee bean that transforms. And when I look at you, I don't see a carrot. I don't see an egg. I see a coffee bean who will overcome challenges and change the world. I want you to remember this lesson for the rest of your life. Wherever you go and whatever you do, remember you are a coffee bean and you have the power to transform the environment you are in. No matter how hard things get, how stressful these people become, or how hopeless things look, don't give up. Realize that we don't create our world from the outside in. We create and transform it from the inside out. If you think you're a carrot, you'll, you will believe the power and forces outside you are more powerful than you are on the inside, and you'll become weaker. If you think you're an egg, you'll believe the negativity in the world has the power to harden your heart and cause you to become negative like the world. But if you know you're a coffee bean, you will not allow the outside world to impact you. You will know that the power inside of you is greater than the forces outside you. And with this insight, you will transform your environment and world world from the inside out. We thank you for being a coffee bean to all of us here in our school district. I have a certificate of appreciation from the Kentucky School Boards Association. I'd like to give each of you, and Penny's going to take individual picture, because we love to post on Facebook. <laughs> I want a picture of each of you with your certificate, so I'm going to hand those to you now along with a gift.
We greatly appreciate you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're moving down to our treasurer's report. Mr. Bunsinger. <coughs> Try to present over them real quick about it. All right, tonight I bring you the uh, financials as of December 31st, 2019. The revenues are as follows: uh, beginning balance about 15.8 million. Uh, accounts. Oops, excuse me. I think started going. Expenses. Uh, our seek has remained unchanged. Our monthly receipts are up about 3.6 million from last month, and that's mainly in taxes. Uh, and it's down 3.5 from the same period last year, and that's all in taxes. Uh, you'll notice that federal cash request uh, is at a zero. Uh, that was uh, due to an error. Uh, did not hit send on my, the email that went to the state, so it's coming now in this month. So, but I apologize, but. Uh, fortunately, we're, we're, we're cash rich at this point, so we're okay. Uh, so total monthly receipts about $6.3 million uh, for a total of about $22.1 million. Uh, expenditures. Our accounts payable is about $1.27 million. Uh, it's up about $690,000 when compared to the same period last year. Again, this is, it's in construction. Uh, the significant bills in December were th about $400,000 to train and $174,000 to Westerfield Builders. Uh, and that's for the Bremen Ballpark. Uh, payroll is up $5,000 versus uh, December 2018. Sub costs are only up 1.3%, which is actually a 6% decrease. <laughs> Uh, from the previous month's growth, so we're actually we're going in the right, we're trending in the right directions in terms of uh, sub cost. Uh, so a payroll expense for about 2.75 million for a total expense of about four million. Uh, the, the breakdown of the accounts payable, uh, fixed and mixed expenses were about 996,000. Variable costs were 173,000, and utilities are 104,000. Uh, utilities are are starting to trend down a bit now, so um, I'm looking forward to seeing that go down even further. I'm, I'd really like to see it break 100,000. So, and I think we'll ha I think we'll be able to do that here in the in the, in the near future. So. <laughs> Uh, so further breakdown of the 1.27 million. Uh, general fund is about 546,000 of that. Uh, fund two is 52,000. Construction 573,000. Food service and daycare was about 100,000. And scholarships uh, was a thousand dollars was paid out. Uh, the ledger balance at the close of the month about 18 million. Uh, bank balance about 10.6. Outstanding checks 347,000 for cash close at the end of the month at 10. Three million. Uh, breakdown really about about two point three million up from the previous month, and that's really uh, all in general funds. So, too yeah. many questions on that one. Uh, extended financial picture uh, in May of, of 2020, we, we expect to have about 22.9 in there uh, from receipt of our of our funds, and that is it. Any questions? Is the money in February, the seven point eight million in February, is that all TVA? That is, well, that's TVA, but actually we got it this month, so and I, oh. we got it after I fixed mm -hmm. this. So okay. those those are the actual dollar amount. And Mr. Davis, when, he, when we go in the superintendent report, okay. gonna, we're going to touch on that. Let's do an odd amount. So I was wondering. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it was a pleasant surprise. Any questions? If not, I need a motion to approve the treasurer's report. Motion. A motion by Ms. Bard and a second by Mr. Johar. All in favor of approving the treasurer's report, say aye. 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 Opposed? I hear none. And 
payments of bills and salaries. Thank you, Chairman Rager. This evening I bring to you uh, $232,479.76 in board bills. Uh, the significant checks were to uh, Old Wealth National Management for bond payments of $94,306 and Summit Engineering for $9,819.60. Discussion on bills and salaries. If not, I need a motion to approve. A motion by Mr. Bowers. Second. Second by Ms. Wells. All in favor of paying bills and salaries, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear none. And public participation? Yes. None. Okay. Great. <clears throat> down to our administrative report and the superintendent report mr davis thank you chairman rager board members uh we'll go ahead and since we have some folks here with us we'll jump right into the principal's part of this and uh we'll start off with uh, miss sheffield she's here tonight from from job corps excited to be here. Job Corps had a lot of changes this year and on the national level and on our local level also. Um, I think it's really a statement to the school system and the kind of people we turn out. Our next senior director is Gavin Gorm, who graduated from U of Mer County. So I think that's a that's an excellent statement of the kind of education that you the district's been providing for years. So I'm really pleased with that. Um, Job Corps of federal programs kind of lag behind some. So our physical year 18 actually did not end until July. And then they, it takes a while for them to get all the figures together and everything. And then corporate has a uh, convention with all of the Job Corps that they run. Horizons runs seven Job Corps all over the United States. And um, at the corporate convention, they presented this to our center director to bring back to you. We were the number one Horizons uh, high school program in last fiscal year. This is Samuel Biles saying, I'm a triplex for you so you can pass that down that way. This is Samuel, he's one of our students and he's going to introduce himself and share some thoughts. Hey, hi, how are you? Uh, my name is Samuel Balls. I'm from McLean uh, County, Kentucky, and uh, I've been at Job Corps for about a year and a half now, and I come to get my loading degree and my high school diploma, and I'm just completed high school, and I've got my one D and my three D loading. Uh, I have my resume with me if y'all like to see it. He was also named um, student of the, the month and well the most outstanding students one month. And he has his certificates for all of his well education. Has it already go out and look for that that kind of job? nice when I looked at his resume for and I thought I wanted to share we want to share that with you all so that you could see the training that he got here with us at New York. And um, I've been feeding to him for a couple of days. Um, Samuel did work based learning at Bard Distilleries and formed a great relationship and that is the most important thing. We all know that from kindergarten on, on, on up through high school. That that relationship is what makes success and Kim we appreciate Thank you. Thank the relationship you formed with Samuel. Thank you. So she has something for you Samuel. And I'm going to stand on the steps so I'm actually looking you eye to eye for once. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I would like to present to you with your high school diploma from Gilbert County High School. And I would also like to tell you all what a wonderful worker this young man is. Um, we had several young men that came to work with us, and Sam was 
Samuel was the one that stood, stood with, stuck with us day in, day out, in over 100 degree weather. He was there every day. I fed him a lot. <laughs> And he lost a lot of weight while he was there. Um, but he is a really hard worker. And I'm going to keep his resume. Um, he's, he has plans to move out of the area um, in just a little while. But um, if he ever finds himself in need of a job, I would be very interested in talking to him. Samuel, congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Alex, uh, Renaissance Center. Uh, want to begin, got five good updates on our roof. Um, the, as of today, the HVAC guys were there. Uh, they've started uh, setting the curbing and also installing the flashing. And from my understanding, they'll kind of work with the roofers who will be there next week and they'll all kind of work around each other. They'll do a part, the Lucas will do a part, and so forth. So uh, we're hoping by the end of next week uh, we'll have a lot of progress shown. I uh, want to give us uh, thanks to several guys, Mr. Davis, Mr. Budsinger, uh, Mr. Johar. They were there the day that uh, the roof blew off. And, and from that point on, uh, our maintenance guys were in there cleaning up, uh, cleaning up the, the area, doing whatever they had to do to get. You know, it, it cleaned up at that time. Big thanks to Mr. Rager. He accommodated us. Let us come to his building for a couple of days uh, while we didn't really know if the building was safe or not. Uh, so, so big thanks to him and his staff for uh, helping us during that time. We were actually able to get back in our building in two days because of our, uh, our maintenance guys, so we appreciate it. And also Gary Williams, our custodian, he cleaned up and cleaned up and cleaned up. We had a ton of tiles that fell puddles of water. Once he would get it cleaned up, more rain would come, it seemed like, and we would find new leaks. So he worked around the clock. He came in on weekends, sometimes at night when it would be raining, just to check. Uh, so, so big thanks to everybody that was involved in that. And hopefully our kids will be back in that ring next week or maybe next. So it is it is finally moving along a little bit after the bid process and the insurance and all that good stuff. Um, on to some really good news. Today we had two students who uh, completed uh, the MOOC program and will be graduates in May. They're, they're graduating now, but they'll walk in May. One of the students was uh, a fifth-year uh, senior who was uh, three credits short, two of credit recovery. And then, a, and then a class um, that he had to complete. He got done today. And then the second student, Dakota Piper, is a kid that's been in and out of alternative school um, since he was in middle school. He's been in the uh, MOVE program for two years, and he completed today, and he is the first male in his family to graduate. And I think Alex and uh, and Miss Bumps were fighting over who got to share that as being the most proud. So I let Alex go first. So he got that. Miss Bumps, you're up now. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Mr. Davis. So, uh, we're so excited and, and uh, the, super proud of that young man. And that's a huge contribution to Alex and his staff. Because, uh, sometimes we all know just that one-on-one -on -one attention for some of our kids just goes a long way. So I appreciate him and his staff for sure. Um, but as always, we have lots of things happening in Mustang Nation, but I did try to really uh, succinct it tonight. And I want to give a shout out to Mr. Long for welcoming. We did a little bit of a principal switch the other day, and uh, he and I got together at South Middle the morning, and then when he came to East with me that afternoon, and uh, Mr. Carver and Mr. Floyd did the same thing. We did a little over road cars. So I think it was a little fun for the kids, and kind of got some rumors started, so uh, we're going to keep riding that out a little bit longer, and uh, see how, how that goes We had a lot of art students at the high school to uh, compete recently in the Scholastic Art Contest, and uh, of that group of students, we had some to place at the gold level, which is at the highest level. We received four golds, and of those golds, uh, one of those had a total of five students in it, so it was a large collaborative project, and excited about that. 
We also had some band students to go to Western last week for uh, all district. We had 14 of those in our band who were able to participate in that. And then we also had two students selected for all state in band, and they are Will Burris and uh, Sophia, or excuse me, Sophie Drake. And very excited about those two students being able to uh, be selected for all state. Beauty and the Beast rehearsals are underway. They, the kids are working extremely hard for that. So be looking for more information on that. You can already go online to buy tickets now if you go onto the uh, Philly T. Martin uh, Junior Hall website. You'll be able to buy those tickets now. Uh, our book frenzy, our next one's coming up. Uh, very fortunate with uh, Miss Hardison at the high school and helping us out with that. And uh, this will be our third and final one of the year. If any of you are interested in, in uh, selecting a book to read with our kids and then hold those book discussions, I'll make sure Mr. Davis has that info and he can forward it on to you all. And uh, it will just be a simple uh, contact with Miss Hardison and she'll help you get a book. But it's actually uh, one of our fun events. I know Mr. Hardison ends up a lot of times coming. And uh, what I think, I don't know which is more fun watching a bunch of adults fight over what prize, if their name's going to get drawn out for a prize or kids getting <laughs> prizes. But it is one of our uh, uh, fun events we have. Uh, also, our academic team's getting prepped for District Governor's Cup, which will be right around the corner later in the month. Um, our, our Lady Mustangs and Mustangs had some big district wins the other night. Mr. Bowers was there, and that was some fun for us. And uh, that was against McLean County. We'll have Ohio County coming up right around the corner as well. So uh, that's all I have for you. Thank you, Ms. Bumps. Let's jump now. We're all interested in what's coming, Ms. Jones. So let's right. let's jump to Greenville Elementary here. Well, I wanted to spotlight our after school club. So uh, this, uh, Sherry's going to be playing a video that Miss McGee, our librarian, put together just to show you. It's just one minute, but uh, it shows you the spotlights what the after school clubs do. We have about 10 after school clubs. And uh, just want to spotlight the teachers for that because they totally volunteer their time in order to put on these clubs at school. Um, one Wednesday a month. And as you can tell, I brought some musicians with us. Oh, but I did bring some musicians with us tonight, and while that's playing, I, I want to introduce them here in just a few minutes. We appreciate Miss Mohan. She actually sponsors two clubs at our school, and it is the Dulcimer Club is one, and then the Nine Cooking Club. And I appreciate Mr. Lyle. He brought his daughter, Bradley Ann's recipe book, so she could share with you all some of the things that they've made uh, this year in the Nine Cooking Club. She put that together for us. With us today to play the dulcimer on this side, this is Miss Riley Welburn. She's fourth grade, daughter of Wendy Johnson. And then next to her is Addison Dwyer. She's also fourth grade. She's the daughter of Justin and Taylor Dwyer. Miss Aubrey Caldell is in third grade, and she is the daughter of Chris and Lori Caldell. And then fourth grader, Miss Riley Hill, and she is the daughter of Jason and Sarah Hill. And they're going to play Bile Them Cabbage. Okay, thank you for having us. Oh, y'all want to just hold your dulcimer up for a baby. See, this is a dulcimer, and it's Kentucky's state instrument. And a lot of people realize that, but it's an old instrument, and in the Bible was developed since then. And uh, kind of started where they are now with the, the Appalachia type people. And so instead of the games and all they played, they, they did that. 
out uh, last week and we actually swapped with our assistant principal so we could spend some time together and uh, so we had a good day and appreciate us having the opportunity to do that. Thank you. Can you pick out proud parents in the crowd as they're playing? <laughs> Outstanding job, young ladies. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a special treat. Yeah. Yeah. Especially given the yeah. 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 Jason, can you play it yet? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, ladies. Mr. Rager, you can follow that. You can play drums. We had a December 20th uh, recognition assembly uh, at North Middle. We recognized we had 152 students with uh, perfect attendance or were near perfect attendance. We recognized our students with a lot. Uh, our winner map test score uh, most improved and our high scores. Uh, we ended it with a uh, staff versus students volleyball game. Well, let's just say it didn't go. <laughs> All right. I don't think we got any of the kids out. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, of course. Uh, we have a mother-daughter uh, paint party night scheduled for uh, February 6th. And uh, in February, we're going to also have a father-son night. We've uh, bought some new uh, uh, breakout uh, escape box type software. So we're going to have a uh, like an escape room night uh, for a father-son night. Uh, we're going to do that uh, probably at the end of February. Uh, also have a staff pottery uh, painting event scheduled for February 24th. Uh, it's going to be at the depot. Uh, we have uh, some January theme days coming up. Uh, January 17th, we're going to have uh, Hat Day. January 24th, Superhero Day. February 7th, Decade Day. February 21st is Nerd Day. Uh, I do want to thank uh, Mr. Lyle uh, for we did a principal swap uh, earlier this week. And uh, we got to go back to South Middle, and he had come. He, he came to North Middle for half the day. Mr. Lloyd and Mr. Ryan did the same thing. So I uh, really enjoyed getting to spend the day with him, and uh, hope to uh, get to do that East Campus soon. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rager. Mr. Lyle, South Middle. I mentioned the principal swaps as well that Ms. Bumps and Mr. Rager mentioned. I uh, just enjoy being able to, to talk with him. You know, a lot of times we're so busy, we don't have the opportunity to just talk and, and go into classrooms and discuss things we see. But that was a great opportunity. Uh, but I'll give a shout out to both North staff and East Campus. Uh, I mean, teachers were working hard. Uh, kids were doing, you know, on task and engaged. And it was just great to see. And it's, it's always great to see those kiddos, especially. Uh, at East Campus that you know we had as middle schoolers or that have come between the two schools. So that was great. Um, January 9th we did have our uh, first homecoming uh, of middle school and that uh, was between our boys boys games against Grayson County and that was our first event and had 6th grade, 7th grade uh, Princess and Prince and then we had an 8th grade King and Queen. Um, then this upcoming Thursday I sent you an email uh, or thank you Thursday to recognize our board members and thank you for all you do all of our central office leadership uh, staff and our technology staff so we'll have them next Thursday at 11 45 if you can come join us and then something that uh, we're very proud of and interested to see how this goes uh, we have started a, a safe skill or soft skills challenge at the South Middle started my leadership Academy today they all received a card and their challenge is now they know what soft skills 
schools are. They, they, we've instructed on them, they've, they've learned that now for several years. So now their challenge is to go out into the community and find community folk working in our community who are showing soft skills and good customer service. And so when they see that, they will give a card to that community member, explain to them what it is. It has all the information on the back for that community member, possibly post it to our Facebook or Twitter accounts. And it's just a way for our students to give back to our community members and thank them for doing the right thing and, cool. and cause them to recognize it. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, but very excited to, to see how this turns out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lyle. Uh, Mr. Hardison, longest. Um, on the 20th, the last day of the semester, we had our Spartan Spotlight Assembly, and uh, we had a number of uh, recognitions, but I do want to mention a couple here. Uh, we had Miss Alexis Reynolds, fifth grader. Uh, she won the uh, Teacher Association Grandparents of the Year essay contest, so uh, very impressed with her writing abilities, and uh, uh, we do appreciate our students participating in that, that activity. Also, at that, at that uh, assembly, I'd like to say we recognize a number of kids for uh, other other awards, but I do want to mention uh, our staff person that we uh, recognized that month. Uh, uh, Teresa Cheney, one of our janitorial staff, she does an amazing job. She makes relationships with the kids. And, uh, she, does, she works a unique uh, shift. She uh, spends time at the school uh, helping with the lunchroom during the day, and then she puts a great effort in to uh, clean a number of classrooms at night. So, uh, she goes above and beyond, makes our school special, and, and is a very key point uh, for person on our staff. I do want to say again, uh, I think we mentioned it here, and, and I enjoyed the uh, principal swap. Miss Jones was, was great, and uh, we enjoyed getting our assistant principals involved. Um, we confused a number of parents when, when we were uh, at the drop-off point, and uh, it was a lot of fun. But uh, I enjoyed uh, experiencing the emergency drill that they had scheduled that day, and uh, it was, uh, you know, we, we kind of, you know, I jumped, jumped in there and, and was another hand for them, but, but they had things going really well. The staff did a great job. Uh, kids did an amazing job. So uh, we've made some changes to our, our recent drills, and uh, Greenville's doing a great job, and uh, I appreciated her doing that when we when we give, give me the opportunity to kind of uh, experience that through them, but uh, also uh, gave us a chance to give some feedback to each other. And, uh, you know, we learned by discussing it after the fact. And, uh, of course, she came back to Longest. She used to work, work at Longest a few years back, so it was kind of a homecoming for her to see some of the teachers she worked with, and uh, it was a lot of fun there as we visited classrooms. A couple, a couple more items I do want to mention. Um, on January 10th, something we started doing this, this year is uh, uh, our Citizens of the Month. We're doing a, a luncheon for those guys, and we get them together. We're doing, a, I think Stan Paul Steve had this idea in one of his books, and we do a little luncheon where they get together and have some fun with us. Uh, they uh, they take their meal from the lunchroom and just hang out with us. And, and sometimes just that, that time with those kids and uh, with us sharing how special they are, um, means a great deal so their smiles and, and our praise and uh, it just means a lot that uh, uh, they, they you know they put forth the effort and we just want to make that special recognition of them uh, on the 17th uh, that's tomorrow we have our junior beta club induction we're going to add 19 members to our beta club uh, we're going to do that at one o'clock if any of you are are out and would like to stop by and join us with that we're going to be doing our junior beta induction ceremony i think that'll put our total number to around 40. Uh, that's uh we're pretty excited to get our fourth and fifth graders involved we're trying something different this time that's typically been a night event uh but but junior beta is about motivating other kids sometimes and and, and being a, a goal for students so we're going to do it during the school day and invite our second graders up to come to the assembly and see what it's like to be successful in school so we're going to try to let these guys be student leaders as they accept that uh, recognition uh, on the 21st i think uh, mr lyle tried this or did this with great success and I, we're going to we're going to try it at longest we're going to do a father-son night uh, we're going to do a cornhole uh, tournament and we're also going to teach them how to make some milkshakes so we're going to have a big time and uh, uh, we're starting off small we're going to start off with a 16 team tournament and uh, we'll just see how it goes and uh, if, after, if we're successful if we survive and, and do well we're going to expand it and have a bigger event but uh, we're starting off small and i think I think I had uh, 
double the entries I, I was accepting this first time. So definitely some interest there and looking forward to uh, uh, maybe having a second event. Uh, on the 30th, do do want to uh, possibly invite you to our January Spartan Spotlight. It's going to be big this month. Um, it will be the next to last day of our student, our, our guidance counselors. Uh, she's retiring at the end of January. And so we're going to make it a point to celebrate her and our Spartan Spotlight. So if you guys uh, are, are available, we'd love to have you join us on that. We're doing it on Thursday the 30th uh, around 1.15. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hardison. Uh, Mr. Sharp from Bremen recently recovered from the flu. Better. I promise you move over. We recently had a principal swap and Miss Eve came to my, my building and I learned quite a bit from her. She had to tolerate me and then I later had the flu, so I'm sorry, Miss Eve. <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of theme days going on at Bremen Elementary. We have these every Friday. Uh, Nerd Day is this. It, we had that uh, last Friday and it was a big day because they like to mimic their principal. And then dress like a Bremen staff member is tomorrow. Uh, we always have lots of interesting comp people dressing up. We had some student last year dress up as our pit custodian, uh, mustache and all. <laughs> <laughs> we have a dad and night. We just recently had a dad and night and it, students really did, did a good job with sharing their student uh, data for map assessments. Really working on our chance, going back over our expectations after a long break. Students are a little bit wild, so we got to go back over those camps expectations. <laughs> SRO Roberts and I are doing a coffee bean book study with our leadership team, and our students are preparing for the Visual and Performing Arts Festival, which is a talent show and an art show, uh, which is February 6th, so if you guys want to come out to that, you're more welcome. We had a great visit to Hanson Elementary, uh, where we looked to learn about growth and focus on uh, reading and math, and we had a really good place to eat at Hanson's. Hanson Market is really good. Um, thank you to our school board members. We'll honor you guys on January 31st at our Eagle Pride Assembly uh, at 8 745. Thank you, Mr. Sharp. Miss Hicks, interesting. Uh, we've had lots going on in January. Uh, we returned back from our winter break and we celebrated the first semester of perfect attendance with a snowball fight and all the junior kids with perfect attendance and all that teachers and parties come to the gym. We have a paper white snowball fight and hot chocolate and then nothing with this bathroom. Uh, we've had the Kentucky Derby Museum to come and present to our school. So a special thanks to Mary Kate Cord Cordes and the uh, Farm Bureau Insurance for helping to support that. They do a fantastic job of communicating with our students. So our kindergartners and first graders learned about racing colors of the Derby. Uh, second and third grade learned about creating traditions. And our fourth and fifth grade learned about economics in the Derby. So we really appreciated that. Our school theme this year is World Tour. We're going places, so we are participating in the Great Mail Race this year. We just mailed those letters last Friday, but we got our first letter back from Maine today. And the students in classrooms, the lower grades did a classroom letter and the upper grades did individual letters. So we got letters in all 50 states. But the kids were memorized today because they sent pictures of their recess at Maine and they're all snow so sled. They thought that was the coolest thing that they get to do that at recess. So maybe no more like snow. Delay, I don't know, but the, that's an hour delay in Maine. Okay. And that hill is behind the school, so you can one of the pictures. That's recess. School, so. um, that was one of our kindergarten devices. Eric and Vince, if we can have a snowball fight at school, we can go sledding too. So. Uh, so we're waiting for those other letters to come back. We've got our map up that we can uh, document where those come from. So we're hoping we get a response from our 50 states. Um, do you want to invite you to our student recognition? It'll be Friday, January the 31st at 7.30 in the morning. And we 
we like to recognize you in our time to make sure that our kids know that school board members are not really just two by fours or anything like that, that they are real people. Uh, we also did the principal straw that Mr. Grant, uh, Mr. Sharp talked about and alluded to. He came to Central City last spring and spent the day with me, so I spent the whole day with him last Wednesday, not knowing that he had the flu. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a good day and I appreciate that. So. And then the assistant principal swapped as well. So we appreciate that. Thank you, Ms. Higgs. Uh, I think we have Leanne Sherrod here from South Elementary tonight. I am here healing in for Mr. Wells. I'll try to do as, as decent a job as what he does. We had the uh, Taekwondo. Curry <laughs> 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 Taekwondo visited us last week, so we want to thank Ms. Uh, Master Johnson for coming to see us. Uh, the academic team, they visited uh, GES. We'd like to also thank the MSES archery team. I got third place at the Ar Ar Auburn Archery Tournament. And uh, we'd like to thank Josh Willis and his assistants for their time and their effort. We had a grandparent essay winner for AARP, a fifth grade student named Ashton Smith. Uh, his teachers uh, were presenting himself, were presented certificates on Wednesday for our Sun News. We also had Kids on the Block, who's sponsored by Felix Martin Foundation. They came and visited and presented two presentations to our school and our student body. Um, we had a very active week last week at our school, so we have a special shout out for Officer uh, Britt Robertson uh, for last week. And we have a second Ready for K event uh, on Tuesday the 28th, and we are really super excited to be swapping with uh, Greenville again. I need so extra we'll, help. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, since there was five schools, there was one at twice, so uh, we'll be visiting Greenville. We're really excited about that. Thank you, Leanne. Mm -hmm. I'd like to take a, a second, although we've already talked about board appreciation, just to let you know from, from my point of view, and I'm confident from others, we do appreciate you. Uh, you're very supportive. I think you believe in what we're doing. You believe in our kids. You don't mind asking tough questions and, 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 and staying in, in things as you should, And we, but we respect the way you go about it, and uh, you, you are appreciated. Uh, we, we, we sincerely appreciate what you do. Some more than others, right? Uh, some more than others. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Uh, the personnel actions are in your folder. I always have to say that. Uh, Ms. Ms. Sherry over there gets me if I don't. The KSBA meeting is February 28th. The conference is the 21st to the 23rd at the Gold House. You know, and that's something you probably need to go to. I don't know if you can or not, but let, let Sherry know. She'll work on the hotel and the registration and all that. Uh, she'll help you through that. Obviously, they're in legis the legislature is meeting now, and it's, it's not been quite as contentious as it has been in recent years, but there's still things going on. And one that I want to make you aware of that I hope goes through, and I'm sure you do, is HB 220, and that's the charter school training bill, which if passed, and I feel like it will, uh, that would mean you do not have to get all of this charter school training. Uh, board members would not have to unless there was an actual charter school application. So that seems much more reasonable, and uh, I thought that was a very much a big positive for you guys. We have no attendance and enrollment due to the month ending January 15th, so uh, Lee, we don't have that this round. It was just not ready quite yet. I do want to say, I'll, I'll allude to it again, um, Mr. Blessinger and, and Susan, you saw that. Uh, the TVA check came in, and we were anticipating, I, I was 6'4", six, 6'8", four, six, six, four, six, maybe in that range, and it came in at $7.833 million. So we, we're about a million more than we expected. Now, in this one point in time, there's no way but that we're excited, and that's a great thing. Now, what, what's still happening down the road, we still don't know. We didn't anticipate that. Nothing that was told us led us to believe that budget for that or count on that. So as TVA, as Unit 3 starts coming off, you know, as we start looking percentages coming off, is it going to come off to 7.833? Did, did the gas plant do better than, you know, those kind of questions we're just not getting answers to. Uh, but we're due to go to the state. Eric and I are going to Frankfurt. We we're going this week. Uh, they said, hey, we'll know a little more uh, if you wait till March, and we're going to go March 10th now. As we continue 
to try to dig to get some kind of idea of what what we're going to be when all this when the dust settles and so we can budget accordingly and make plans accordingly so having kind of thrown a damper on that number because we're still worried what's going to happen we still don't know undoubtedly that's more than we expected and we're very pleased to get get a number that big so it, that'll be in the treasurer report I'm sure next month um, they love it when I do this so I'm going to call on a couple of folks out here to give me a couple of updates uh, Melody I know you made the last Bremen ballpark meeting correct would you give a quick update on where we are with that and, and Grant can probably fill in and Grant I'm sorry and Grant is obviously he was there too yeah, um, I don't even know about the plaque or anything just let me know <laughs> <laughs> he's all over getting a plaque for the show <laughs> That's right. They're going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> He's a five-star plaque getter. Uh, they're going to try to uh, uh, play some, um, I guess, this summer, um, but really not they, officially. The goal is to play in the spring. Yeah. They've got the building wrapped in styrofoam insulation. They've got roof on, shingles. They're working inside of the concession stand, but uh, we made an agreement to have to see some of it, but not all of it, for the spring so that after fall soccer, we can go back and see it again. So it'll set in for the 2022 season, spring season. So it would be playable, but they're going to overseed it in the fall so that it would be really ready to be played on uh, that next season. So it'll be a limited use right now, but. Uh, hopefully next year we'll start. still picking out some colors on some things we had to go do some finalization on some um, uh, some of the aesthetics of the of the building all right thank you and matt if you would just quickly i know with safety marshals coming next week just a real you know brief overview on what's going on with with the safety stuff and the new safety marshal and how that may affect okay, yeah. us as part of the center bill one we now have a statewide safety marshal and the a compliance person will be here next week um, between Tuesday and Friday meeting with all our schools. Um, principals know about that, of course, and the touching base with SROs. We have a we have the document that they will be using. It's a tool to go through our schools and see where we are as far as being in compliance with everything from as simple as having your evacuation routes up and posted to having double locked front entryways in your schools. The first time through will be just to relationship build and to kind of assess the state, the state of the state. Um, how far are schools along? We know some are further along. We're actually very far along. I mean, we've gone through using the tool ourselves. And besides some major construction type things um, and a couple of odds and ends, everything that, we're, that we have in place, um, it, it checks off on all the boxes. It goes into mental health and counseling and all of those components as well. So some of the things are just not possible right now as far as the ratio of counselors to students and things like that. But we know that we would hope there's going to be some sort of funding that comes from the state level in order for us to meet those needs. We see a lot of grant opportunities that are coming open. We met today um, on one, as a matter of fact, briefly to see which direction we wanted to go in. But we all know the most important thing we do is we keep our staff and our students safe. And without that feeling, no learning is going to happen that's going to be substantial in any way. And the world keeps changing. And we will do everything we can always do in order to make that happen. So that's really where we are. Um, we've got more camera systems installed since the last time we've seen you. Upgraded. We're updating everything. It ties it all together into one system. In the past, we had individual systems that I could log into, but it took us separate password and they didn't act the same way you know what I mean like rewinding and all of that now it's seamless from my office I can see seven out of the nine locations at any moment and so can law enforcement is needed so those are the big pieces we're looking to add on more SROs um, I know Mr. Davis talks with you all a little bit about that <coughs> and that that's an overall goal that we have but just a shout out to our principals and our staff and teachers and our kids I mean the most important thing we can do is not be scared but to be proactive and 
in the moment is the biggest thing we need to do. And we're teaching all of our folks how to make that happen. We've had a big change in how we do fire drills. We're going to debrief that tomorrow at the principal's meeting. Um, if there's anything out there that we know of that other schools or districts are doing that is making an impact, we immediately get to it and, and see how we can implement it. Mr. Davidson? Well, no, thank you. Uh, and, and with Matt on the, that end of things, and Julie is on the mental health, and we're trying to, we, we have a, through Greg, uh, Grant that we are going to be, we're just getting started Julie next month or two, probably could give you a good update on that, getting more counselors, more mental health help for our kids. Um, we're trying. And we're trying to, to you know, uh, obviously all you see is test scores, but there's a whole lot more that goes on. And we're trying to meet kids' needs all the way around from Joe during the summer, obviously what she did with the food. So kind of proud of, of, of our folks and some of the things that, you know, they've got going on. Uh, and that concludes my report. Thank you. All right, we'll move on down to our board action items. And item A is to consider the regular monthly meeting dates and times for the 2020 calendar year, KRS 61.820. And you've, you've seen those. I know Sherry has, has done all the work here uh, going through the calendar and trying to see when that third Thursday fell on, a, on an inconvenient date. So there's been three changes, and those are February 27th, which was moved from the 20th because of the KSBA conference, April 23rd, which was moved from the 16th due to spring break, and October 22nd, which was moved from the 15th due to fall break. We're not sure about November and December because the KSBA winter symposium dates could fall on that. We don't know when they are yet, so we left them the third Thursday as, as is. So that's what we're pro proposing to do is uh, stay at 5.30 on the third Thursday with these dates. Uh, if you approve these, we'll get those out and get them on our uh, get them on Facebook and social media and principals. I have copies to give you tomorrow so you can you know put them on your calendar as well. Three dates changed, yes. February 27th, April 23rd, and October 22nd. Uh, they're all basically moved back one week. And we go backwards instead of forwards because it gets tough on our on our financial folks in the schools to get the reports in if we go early. Any discussion? I have a motion by Mr. Johar. Second. Second. Second by Ms. Bard. All in favor of considering the regular monthly meeting dates and times for the 2020 calendar year, KRS 61.820, say aye. Aye. All opposed? I hear none. And down to item B, approve entering into a partnership with the Confucius Institute uh, for a second Chinese teacher at North Middle School for the remainder of the 2019-20 school year. Mr. Rager. All I'm asking for tonight is uh, that we have an opportunity to get a second Chinese teacher at North Middle at no cost to the district. And um, what's going on is that uh, in the Chinese uh, culture that uh, our Chinese teacher, uh, the workload is tremendous compared to what they teach in China. So she reached out to the director that, uh, you know, that the workload, we're well within our minutes but it's still uh, you know, a, a tedious workload as compared to what they're used to. And I uh, uh, have had some issues with some classroom management, so their solution is to bring a second teacher in, have two teachers in the classroom at all times, and uh, they would kind of uh, team teach, where I think that our current teacher would teach four uh, classes a day, the other one would probably teach two, but they would remain in the room at all times. So basically we're gonna get two teachers um, for really it's no it's still no cost to the school district so uh, same contract as uh, the last teacher I look this is a good opportunity since it's not costing us anything I did uh, talk to the director and told him that uh, uh, basically it's not in the contract but I did tell him that uh, we uh, at our site-based council agreed that we would do uh, a two-week uh, period and that you know with a kind of a probationary period and that if it wasn't working and it's was well, one of these deals where that in the contract I can terminate it anytime so if it's not working after two weeks then we'll go back to the way we were doing it if it doesn't improve so that's where we're at with that. 
so I'm just asking uh, for your approval uh, to uh, add a add a second teacher. I'll make a motion to approve. Second by Mr. Johar. All in favor of approving the partnership with the Confucius Institute for a second Chinese teacher at Muhlenberg North Hill. Say aye. Aye. Um, all opposed. I hear none. Thank you. Item C, um, consider agreement between OHMCH and the Muhlenberg County Board of Education for physical therapy services. Uh, thank you, Sharon Rager. This is an agreement that has been in place since 1999. It's, just, uh, it's, it's up for its annual renewal. Um, it's uh, for physical therapy services at a rate of $57 an hour, and we just like to continue this, uh, this agreement with, with uh, Owen, Owensboro Health, Muhlenberg Community Hospital, and the Board of Education. Discussion? I right, need a motion to approve. Motion. motion by Ms. Bard. Second. Second by Ms. Wills. All in favor of considering the agreement between OHMCH, Muhlenberg County Board of Education for Physical Therapy Services, say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear that. And we are down to our board consent agenda items. Um, this includes our meeting, uh, approving the minutes of the prior board meeting. Consider leave of absence request. Consider non-resident contract with Bowling Green Independent. Approve the nutrition and physical activity report. And consider field trip request. Any discussion or questions regarding the consent agenda items? If not, I need a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. Motion by Ms. Wells. <laughs> Second by Mr. Bowers. All in favor of approving the board consent agenda items say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear one. And I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Ms. Wells. All in favor of adjourning say aye. 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 All opposed? I hear one. I'm in.